everybody, E here. Let's go ahead. What? Say what you're gonna say. Um, it's kind of funny that Matilda is one of my favorite movies, and Carrie is my favorite book of his. Yeah, but Matilda's not. Yeah, but it's yes. the same stories. Like, a girl from a really bad home life finds out she has magical powers. It's just one ends badly and one ends well. <laughs> I honestly never considered that. That's a that's a very good point. So, hello, everybody. E here. Um, I am here with Dan. Say hello, Dan. I already said hello. <laughs> I know, but just say hello anyways. No. No, okay. <laughs> That's Dan for everybody. All right, so me and Dan are going to be talking about uh, Stephen King's Carrie uh, today. Uh, I am, of course, uh, all my viewers know that I am a huge Stephen King fanboy. I only recently found out that Dan uh, has been reading Stephen King without my knowledge. Of course, I love this, but uh, I had no idea. Uh, so far... How much, what have you read so far of Stephen King's? Um, I did The Shining first, just because I figured start off with the iconic one. And then I'm working on Dr. Sleep, Carrie, and I feel like, no, I don't think there's actually anything else. Never mind. What about Pet Cemetery? Yes, I, I did the, I, I blocked that one from my memory. You blocked that <laughs> one from my, okay, no, fair. I, I remember it, it's just, it, I feel like. I, I think it's just because I, do, I research a lot of true crime. Like, when I'm doing pretty much anything, I'm listening to um, videos about true crime. So when I listen to that book, I don't think it affected me as much because there was a little prologue for the audiobook. He was talking about how that book messed him up so bad and how when he finished writing it, he was like, I cannot believe I just made this. And I was, when I finally finished reading it, I'm like, this isn't actually that bad. But I think that's just because I've read and listened to so much real stuff that's worse than that that especially because of the zombie element that it didn't affect me as much just because of the other stuff that i've researched right if if you guys hear um recently uh my son chris had a uh, bicycle accident so if you hear any <laughs> any upset noises in the background you may or may not uh that's because the right now of the dam. It, he's he's currently yeah, he's currently dealing with wound care. Shell is taking care of his wounds. I want to go back and talk to Dan more about the true crime aspect. There are several points in this book um, where Stephen King hops back and forth between uh, fictional nonfiction and what is happening in the book. And what I mean by that is there are several quotes from fictional books within this book to try and bring about maybe a sense of realism, a sense of depth to Carrie. Uh, how did you feel about those sections of the book? I like that a lot. I love when stories include more of their universe. Like uh, in um, one of Rainbow Rowell's earlier books, Fangirl, she had the Harry Potter parody because the main character is a person who writes fan fiction. It is the Harry Potter parody is called Simon Snow, and she actually goes in depth about that. And I love when stories go in, they add little things like that, like famous movies from there or famous celebrities from there, because it just makes it feel a lot more real. And I, I like that aspect a lot. So it's the uh, it's the depth of the lore yeah, that you... Yeah, it, it makes it feel like actual people who went through this because there's now... Um, more not so like evidence but like you get to really feel instead of just experiencing it you get to kind of understand what it was like a little more because you see the aftermath gotcha okay um in uh, m much of our family our extended family is hyper religious much like uh margaret white in the book uh did you how did you feel about margaret's treatment of carrie um, was that realistic? Was it overblown? Oh, how, how, do you, it was, how do you feel? It was, especially, I just watched a case. About, I, forget, I always forget the names of these cases, and I hate it. But there was a story about a man who formed his own cult within his family and killed his, like, seven children because their mothers, who were also 
both his step slash adopted and biological daughters, I'm pretty sure, were the mothers of those children. And when they came to um, take the children away because he wasn't taking care of them properly, he was, um, he killed them. But uh, I feel like people who don't research true crime might say like, oh, there's no way that Margaret is a real sick care. But there are people who are like that. And it's, it's, it's insane. You'd never believe it. But there are, she's strangely, I, I imagine King didn't actually, like, not to say, like, he's, like, bad at researching for his books, but, like, <laughs> I imagine he didn't do as much research into characters who are like that, and she was just kind of a, a scary religious character, but she is extremely accurate for a character who probably wasn't, like, very in-depthly researched. Okay, for, uh, for, the, here, here's where, here's the reason why I wanted to do this, and I got a lot of King knowledge you got a little bit of King knowledge. You've read a couple of his books. Uh, King's mother was hyper-religious. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the stuff that he uh, brought into the book had to do with his own trials being raised ultra-religious. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, it, it feels like that. It yeah. feels like he has, he has carried experience. That makes sense. Now, within our own family, um, we have the hyper-religious aspect. Not as bad as Margaret, just very... Um, well, you do, you do have... Uh, people like my middle sister who would prefer to pray than to take a child to, uh, let's say, a, a doctor. So you, you do have those aspects that we deal with, you know, in every, not everyday life because we don't really have much contact with them anymore. But uh, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those things where you, you see something that is so extreme, something that is so, that feels so overblown that you feel like this can't possibly be true. Now, um, I'm not saying that's how you feel, but uh, many reviews say, you know, people aren't this extreme, but yet we know this to be true. It's quite scary how it is true and how you see these things and, like, you think, oh, that can't be true, and then you see it in real life and you still think it can't be true, but it is, and it's terrifying because in fiction, it seems so fictionalized that it can't even be believed because in fiction personally i like to try and believe it but and then you see it in real life and you think well this is so crazy that it has to be fiction it goes both ways it's the mind can't process it so it just either way when you see it you think it has to be the other thing because there's just no way yeah it's like all those posts that say if 2020 was a uh, a book no one would believe no no one would be able to suspend their belief because so much has gone wrong This year. Um, As far as uh, it, for those of you who don't know, Dan um, and uh, Chris, both of my kids have have been homeschooled since since the beginning. Now, Carrie, of course, takes place in a high school. It opens up in a high school in a shower room with Carrie being bullied for having her period later um, than most uh, girls will have their period. Um, how did you feel reading that, not having that experience yourself? I know, I know you've had experiences on playgrounds where, you know, kids have bullied you, but how did that situation feel not having the experience of public school? It felt believable. It felt just from having friends who have been public school. And I also had a friend who's been in and out of both public school and being homeschooled. It felt, even though I haven't had any experiences like that myself it did feel very realistic and it felt like something that you know I could have experienced if I was in public school and that's just it it's such a real feeling that's written it almost feels violating like I should not be here watching this poor girl be bullied by her peers in when she doesn't even know what's going on because she hasn't been educated on what's going on. That, that's that's very that's that's that you you hit the nail on the head for me. That whole scene, the whole opening of this book, feels like a violation. That's why that's why I like King because it feels that's that's why that's the type of stories I like and that's why I like comic books because you can see in the character. It, I love stories where it feels like I'm not supposed to be here and I should just leave this character alone. But at the same time, you want to know more, and that's why you keep reading and it's like oh this just keeps getting worse and worse <laughs> so so you do enjoy maybe not enjoy maybe enjoy isn't the right word but you do have a certain draw to uh being uncomfortable yeah because it it that's why i go to fiction because there was like a few months where i just had to stop 
doing true crime. I didn't even realize that I stopped looking into real true crime. And I went, because that's when I started reading Stephen King's. I had stopped. I think just subconsciously I was going, can't do this anymore. We need something fake so we can't feel this and constantly go, oh my God, that actually happened. That isn't just a story I'm hearing in a video. That actually happened. And that's why I like his stuff because I still get the same feeling, but I don't actually have to feel like that because I know it's not real. You don't don't have the guilt that this thing actually happened. Yeah. That's, 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 go ahead. um, But to an extent it did because I was watching a, um, a video and the guy was talking about how King based Carrie on two girls that he knew growing up. So there, there is an extent where I can feel, I can still feel guilty about that because she was so based on two real people. So right. That's probably another aspect as to why it feels so real. Um, another thing, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this. Me, if you, if you don't know, me and Dan don't talk much about Stephen King. I don't talk much about Stephen King in my real life, other than when there's a new book out and either either I'm bitching about it or I'm ranting or I'm raving about it. But uh, one of the things, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is because, of course, Dan is a newbie. I'm a fanboy. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to bring up is the uh, <clears throat> the history behind Stephen King's first book, which is Carrie, which is what we were talking about. Um, Stephen King threw this in the trash. Yeah, yeah. Um, He originally threw it in the trash. Tabitha pulled it out and saved it um, and said, continue on. There's a lot of discussion, um, especially in female circles, whether or not Stephen King writes believable female characters, um, which is funny because we all Stephen King fandom all of us know anybody who is into it knows Tabitha reads all of these books mm-hmm. um before it, she reads all of Joe Hill's books before they're published too Owen King's um I'm not sure if she works with Naomi at all Naomi by the way is a unit unitarian minister Owen's an author and professor and Joe is an author I'm not sure about Joe's other professions how do you feel that King tackled the female species in this book extremely well considering he's a guy he um the shower scene he handled it very well and i feel like he a lot of authors especially not especially um also female writers female writers also i think to a certain extent it's because they're trying to make up for themselves but uh, male and female writers um, both can write extremely unrealistic female characters, <laughs> and um, it's just like, how do you? Anyway, um, he usually like you can see female characters who are all like the same type of character, but in this he did it very well. It's considering most of the characters are female. You have Carrie, who's just a mess, and <laughs> just she's Carrie, and then you have Sue, who is a believable friend character I, mean, I can't really remember if she's supposed to be like a popular girl or just like kind of she is part she, she is yeah she's okay, part yeah. of the popular crowd she's because she's friends with chris and all them yeah she that's that's i like the contrast between chris and sue and how they're both written well and written um they're on such opposite ends of the spectrum you have sue who um, like the only mean time, the only time she's really been a horrible person was the shower, and then Chris, who's just known for being like that. They're both written very well. Yeah, the the one of the things that strikes me so much about this book that really, really, really draws out the character is exactly what you said: Sue, Chris, Carrie, even Miss Desjardins. Yeah. All of them feel like completely different characters. Yeah. There's a there's a quote from George R. R. Martin. I think uh, uh, Papanopoulos. I can't remember the guy's first name, but he was in an interview. I believe that's the person. I could be completely wrong. I'm sure the comment section will let me know if I am. But uh, there was an interview with George R. R. Martin, and the interviewer, I believe it was Papanopoulos, said, um, "How do you write such believable female characters?" And George said. Um, see, I have this belief that women are just people too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I, I feel, I feel like that is, that's, that's a major flaw for most male characters because all their, their female characters read the same. They all have the yeah. same struggles. It seems like when a male author tackles a female, a lot of the time it, it boils down to menstruation, pregnancy, 
uh, housekeeping, whatever it be. Um, um, where go ahead. Dating. Dating th- that kind of thing. It's like you're yeah. trying to find a husband, trying to find a boyfriend, and there's just so much more to people in general yeah. than that thing. And I think King succeeds in that area. Yeah. Uh, now he doesn't always succeed. He's written some terrible yeah, female like, characters. Um, I read The Shining and Pet Cemetery back to back, and I thought, um, what is, what's Sue's wife's name? Sue, Sue. Um, Pet Cemetery. Oh, no, uh, Lewis and... Stu, no. Lewis? Uh, it's, I it was it's, it's, No, it's, it's Lewis. It's Cre- Lewis. <laughs> Lewis Creed. Um, Ellie is the... Rachel. Rachel. Rachel is the yeah, mother. I, I noticed a lot of similarities between Rachel and... I forgot her name, too. Um... Dave From the shine, mother. Wendy. Yeah, Wendy, Wendy and Rachel. Winifred, or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah. They are. Ex- they are. They're at least for me. They are. It, they are so similar to the point where they're almost the exact same character, and it's. It almost makes sense because of how this, how the stories are going, but at the same time, it. Kind of bothers me a little bit because they're so similar, and it's like. All the other characters are great. Even Norma, I love Norma. She's <laughs> she's not the same as like um, Mrs. Sherman, or but right. that kind of it like because I read them back to backs. Like the day after I finished one, I read the other, and I was like, these characters are extremely similar. <laughs> that so tends other than that, that tends to happen with King. You put <laughs> yeah. one down, you pick up another one. But yes. Other than that, they are very believable because like even female writers, um, I think it's just a psychological thing. Like trying to be that perfect woman that's often portrayed so instead of right just writing a character no matter their gender they write the perfect woman who has like everything that they want would want in a personality and that's a i think like it, i think it mainly pops up in those stupid like romance novels like all the <laughs> yeah. female characters are the same but right he he does he he writes female characters better than some female authors wow honestly. um there there's a thing uh Jillian Flynn, who wrote uh, Dark Places, Gone Girl, Sharp Objects. Um, I didn't care too much for Gone Girl. I liked Shop, Sharp Objects. Okay, I, I love Dark Places. But one of the things that she said, the whole reason why she started writing was because she wanted to write female characters that were flawed because there were so yeah. few yeah. flawed female characters. Everybody wanted to write about s- strong women, uh, positive women, not not just you know strong women, but positive aspects of women and she came out swinging guns blazing writing about women who were altogether flawed um another thing going back to carrie real quick uh we were talking about how sue is different from chris chris is different from carrie carrie's different from miss desjardin but on top of everything there is also margaret white you have all these different aspects all these different characters and when you when you go back to you have this the sexual liberation of of chris um and even to a point sue yeah. um you have the sexual liber the liberation of those two characters while at the same time you have the closeted mindset of carrie and her mother and then you have the neutral aspect of miss desjardin yeah. um it's such a hard name to say damn you king miss and, D. yeah miss yeah. d uh so <laughs> I, I really like the contrast at this point. Once again, if you if you're listening in and you hear voices in the background, that's just we we're, we're doing this in the kitchen, so and and we're a very open family. So if you hear other voices, please don't pay it any mind. Um but ignore it, mind your business. Yeah, <laughs> ignore it, mind your business. Uh, Chris is getting ready for bed and Shell's trying her best to stay quiet. Uh, Shell, say hi. What's up? What's <laughs> up? <laughs> so uh do you have any more thoughts before I ask you any more questions? If you, if you hear what sounds like a vibrator in the background, that's my son brushing his teeth. Um, <laughs> you didn't have to say that. I didn't have to, but it's still funny. Anyways, uh, do you have anything else that you want to say before I ask you any more questions about Carrie? What you liked? What you didn't like? I'd, I'd especially like to hear what you didn't like if you didn't um, like something. I don't want to repeat myself, so I would just answer as we go okay um one of the things that that bothers me about the book is the the two act structure it seems kind of limited 
Uh, and th- I think the more the more I, I read it, I've read it, I think, five times by this point. Every single time I have read it, it's meant something completely different to me. I read it uh, as a young young man. I read it as a, uh, y- a young adult. I read it as a father. Um, I read it again as a father who had dealt with uh, a child that had gone through puberty. And this last time I read it, I read it shortly before you read it and it gave me a whole other a whole other look at things and that's why I wanted to talk to you about it the uh the struggles uh it's been a long time since I've been a teenager mm-hmm. been a very long time and I I've never been uh a female teenager at all whatsoever I've never had to deal with any of that stuff the when it comes down to that aspect of the book we already discussed you said you, he handled it very well do you think there's anything that he got wrong that you that that's that really affected your suspension of disbelief um i don't think it made me like within reading but after words i kind of noticed um i know that it is different for everyone because i've read like some people just don't have cramps whatsoever, which I can't imagine because I get them super bad. Like, I can't stand up sometimes. But um, I, I would have liked if throughout the book, um, because it does fall, I'm pretty sure it's a short amount of time, I would have liked if Carrie experienced some other um, symptoms of having her period. So, like, like the physical distress yeah, of actually like, having it? Um, being sore, having cramps, being tired. I That's a good liked, point. I would have liked to experience that and being in her mind while not only is she experiencing, you know, the main part, but she's also experiencing all of the other side effects. I would have liked to see that just to see how her mind is going. It's like, well, I don't have to, I don't only have to deal with this, I have to deal with all of this other stuff too. Right. right. No, I, I, I completely understand. I, I never actually thought about that side of it it's not really focused on the the pain that comes with it all that stuff i think there is a slight mention of cramps i i can't actually remember i've read the book you can't you can't memorize every word of everything that you read but i think there might be a slight mention of that but that's that's a very good point because it just comes on so sudden yeah now um i don't want to get too in depth about you know your 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 own biological stuff. I don't want to get into that, but it it seems odd to me that she didn't see it coming. Yeah, like that there was usually, no precursor to the pain or you know. Yeah. Sorry, there was no painful precursor or anything like that because as a man, I all I know is what I hear or what I read yeah. or whatever. And from what I understand is there's pain a day or two before or yeah yeah. Um, the reason I brought that up was because it would have made me believe it just a little bit more, like, on top of all the other stuff. It's like, not only is she, like, um, going through, like, the bullying that's happening and not really believing that Tommy actually wants to take her to the dance. Right. I would have liked, like, I am so tired. I'm having to deal with all of my stupid classmates. <laughs> this guy is asking me out. I'm pretty sure he doesn't actually want to take me out. And on top of that, my torso hurts, and I feel like I'm dying. I would have... I, I think yeah. that would have made it a little believable. Yeah, that, too. I um, She probably... Make, I'm sure not everyone has, like, cramps prior, but, yeah, like, a few days before, it's like, that would have been... But you know, maybe she just is very lucky. So. This, this is true. But uh, then again, I mean, we are talking about a fix of fictional character. Did, yeah. did King not put it in there because he didn't realize that that was the case, or did he not put it in there because he realizes that some... Uh, people do not have those issues as badly as others. You know, it, it's, it all comes down to authorial intention and only King and maybe Tabitha, maybe his kids know. Um, Carrie, I, I find myself liking Carrie more and more the older I get. Um, when I was younger, I thought I was a load of horse shit. I think I gave it two stars. And I, every single time that I've read it, I've given it more stars, like 2.5, 3.5. 3.54 it's it's the same way with pet cemetery yeah. every single time i read it it means something different to me um with this one i with the last one the my last reread what really really struck me was the theme of blood yeah you have the period you have the pig and then you also have the dumping of the pig's blood yeah um, and then by the and end, the red dress yes, too. and and then at the end of the whole thing, what do you have? She stops her mother's heart with her mind, and what does the heart do? It pumps blood. 
Um, so when while you were reading this for your first time, be completely and utterly honest. No is an acceptable answer. Did any of that stuff click with you the very first time that you read it? Yeah, I kept because I like I I'm not very good at it, but because I just forget. Like I try to remember little stuff like that and see if it comes up again. Usually doesn't work. Usually I just forget. But it did. It was very. It wasn't overbearing. It was like blood, blood, blood. Hey, did you remember there's blood in this book? Right. There's blood, but it felt like a little thing. <laughs> that was great. Um, it it felt it was just enough. So that it worked and it wasn't annoying speeding over the head with it, but it was, it was recognizable without being annoying. Right. It was easy to see the pattern of, um, the the pattern and how the theme. Blood, yeah, theme. That's yeah. The, word the, theme, the, theme yeah the theme. The theme of blood. The the first. Uh, I'm just gonna go through this real quick. Uh, I know what the second part is called. Uh, the, actually, I know what the first part is called. The first part of the book is called Blood Sport, and I believe the second part of the book is called The Prom. I'm trying to flip through this paperback copy of, and it's the pages are sticking together. You, yeah, the second one is Prom Night. So part one is Blood Sport. Part two is Prom Night. Let's go ahead and talk. A li- you brought up um, the the fact that Carrie. Uh, is standoffish about Tommy. She doesn't know whether or not Tommy actually likes her. But at some point in time, you get a feeling in the book. Now, I didn't get this feeling. Uh, we, me, me and Dan completely disagree on what movies are, what Carrie movies are good. Um, I, th- I think, and I get a lot of flack for this, but I think the Chloe Grace Moretz remake is better than the Sissy Spacek version. Oh, um. I, I slightly believe with believe um, agree agree with that. Okay. I can understand why, but I think there's I it's also because it's so modern. I feel like there is a certain degree to where this story doesn't work in modern times. That's good. That's especially good point. the names. The names in twenty seventeen or whenever that movie was made. It doesn't it it draws me out because how many teenagers do you meet that are named Sue and Carrie. Yeah, I've, I've, n- parents, I've never met I've never met, met a Carrie anyways, or a Sue. I get what you're saying there. I do believe that just because of I guess just his mindset because he lived in that time when he was right. I just it, for me it really doesn't feel like it works in modern time. If there's another remake, I'd like to see it take place in the time that takes place in the book. But I do I think it's just a preference. No, it is just pre- I can't think of why I. Prefer, actually, I don't know why I prefer the Sissy Spacek version, but I just there's a certain vibe that get that you get when you watch it that I much prefer. But I just I don't like the casting. Yeah, I don't in either. The, in, no, in the most recent. Oh, in the most recent one. Okay. See that this I mean, is this is where we disagree. Ansel Elgort is fine. He's a fine actor. I like yeah. Baby Driver. Whatever. Chloe Grace Moretz, fine actor. I like her in what she's in. I like if I've seen the act. The I'm pretty sure there's other actors that I know in the movie, but they're fine. But I just all of them together in this movie with this plot and taking place in a modern day setting. I just it doesn't rub me the right way, and I don't feel like it really portrays the themes the same. Okay, know. fair enough. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons why I like the new one uh, more than the sissy space sissy spacek version. Um, is because I never believed in the Sissy Spacek version, which I saw the movie before I ever read the book. Um, I didn't believe that Carrie and Tommy had any chemistry. There was there was no chemistry there. There was no. I didn't believe that Tommy actually. It didn't feel like Tommy actually liked her. Whereas with the Ansel, whatever the hell his name is, and Chloe Grace Moretz, with them they had actual that, chemistry. Yeah, yeah, I did like that because there was it him and. The movie, because she did the Fifth Wave. I'm pretty sure he was in that movie. I can't Maybe. remember. I've, I've never seen Whatever. that one. But I did. I do agree with that. I did feel like, to a certain extent, that he what he did have a good time with her at the prom. I, I, I think my favorite is we haven't mentioned it. My favorite is the one from what 2002. Is was it the the one with uh oh what's her name uh Anna. I can't remember her name. You're talking I, about I, the you're talking about the made for TV yeah, movie. Yeah, I like that. It was apparently supposed to spark a show too, which I would. But I think yeah, it was that it, one. Let's talk about that real yeah. real quick. It yeah. it actually was James A. Janice on Kill Count talked about this, but it was supposed to spawn the the 
Anna Bettis? What's her name? And I can't remember. I no but idea. the 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 made for <laughs> TV movie was supposed to spawn a and we we don't we don't talk about the Rage Two at all. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't exist in the lexicon okay, of Stephen King movies. Um, with uh, the made for TV movie, they got so much right, but they had they they didn't have the production quality for it. Yeah. Um, they didn't have they got the ending perfect. They got th- damn near everything. Uh, she destroys the town, all that stuff. Yeah. But it was so terribly made, and I never, I, I, I tried to watch it, but I couldn't. The, the acting was this so. Scene. Angela Bettis, I think, is her name. Um, it was so, so bad. And if you watch the kill count for it, James A. Janice goes over why it was so bad. Um, but there were certain aspects to it that I did enjoy because they got the destruction of the town right. No matter, no matter if they. Uh, no matter if you hate the production quality, they at least tried, and I give them props for that one. But as far as her as Carrie, first off, Carrie is a chubby, acne-ridden teenager in the book. She's supposed to have a... She's supposed to have a makeover. She's supposed... Because she's finally... Finally actually hitting puberty. She's supposed to... Be... Like, start... Like... Looking better and more mature, and that's why... It's gonna. It would be extremely hard unless you did like a Chris Evans beeping himself up for a <laughs> Captain America type scenario. Right, right. Um, it would be extremely hard to portray that same makeover, and I'm, I think that's why they did. They portrayed Sissy Spacek the same way with the baggy clothes and right. the long hair in front of her face to hide it as much. So maybe it's like a little more believable. I, I do like. Um, uh, what were we talking about? I'm trying to get off. Trying to try to get off oh, sorry. I got, sorry. I got you. I got you. I got. A, I went <laughs> off on my own tangent and completely left you behind. Um, we were. I. You had mentioned the. Uh, the. The. The made. You said you did like the made for TV movie yeah. for some reason. Do you remember what you were um, going to say? I think it's just because it's. I wouldn't say higher production value <laughs> than the Definitely than not. Sissy's one, but um, I just it portrays. The same themes as the book, but it adds more. And the the one thing that I really don't like about it is the heart stopping. I feel like that's a wonderful scene to portray in a book because you can let yourself imagine it. Yeah. But the even there's no way to portray that well on screen. The zooming in the heart, even if it's good special effects, it's gonna look silly. And just watching her crumple to the ground without having to zoom in, yeah. you're like, wait, what just happened? Yeah. That, she just that, collapsed. That's a good point. I do like how she died in the the first movie and how the way she mimics the statue she made. Right, right, right. I, that that's a very cool that the iconography there is is amazing. Yeah. But my still my favorite ending is the book because Carrie literally dies in Sue's arms. Yeah. And I, that is a fantastically <laughs> move I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Um that is a fantastically moving yeah. scene I, to have uh, those two come back together. You started with that. Once again you have that theme of blood, but you also yeah. have that theme of you start off with this enemy kind uh this enemy victim kind or sorry, villain victim kind of scenario and then by the end of it, Sue has come around, and Sue is really the only person other than maybe Carrie throughout the book who changes. Yeah. Mister Jardin is the same. Uh, what's her nuts? Uh, Chris. Chris. Chris Hargensen Harkinson. is the same. T- 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 Tommy. Tommy's just Tommy. Tommy is, is just is Tommy. Crazy. If anything, you know what's funny? If anything, I think the the men and the boys in this book yeah, are the are the, are the lacking story. ones. Yeah. Yeah. The, they're the ones who are the most plain. Especially the um. Or antagonistic. I can't believe I first I literally I cannot but I probably I'm sure I've been because I'm not at that go minute but I cannot believe that within hearing her name three times in a row he still <laughs> call her Carly or whatever he calls oh, her. I, 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 I can't believe that. It, it but, happens all the time. I've 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 done it to people. Oh no. Um, unfortunately, I will be completely honest with you. I'm terrible with names. Uh, some of my longtime viewers won't believe this, but that's why I am so adamant about learning my viewers' names and my friends' names is because I'm so bad at it that I've trained myself to... I have called some some friend, some longtime friends some of everything. Um, that I, <laughs> I don't know why this is the case, but it just happens. Um, but with the principal... Um, I do feel that the principal, other other than, and you bring up the name thing is a little bit over the top for his character. His whole character feels over the top yeah, in yeah. modern times. Yeah. 
But back then, they had no respect for women. They okay. had no, yeah, re- that makes sense. no they had no respect yeah. for girls. Yeah. He 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 was just there trying to calm down the situation. Yeah, calm down the woman that's freaking out because she's a woman that's freaking out. Exactly. She has emotions. Some it, don't have emotions. <laughs> exactly. Men men don't cry. There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> Um, going back to the ending real quick, I, I, I've always loved uh, the comeuppance that, that uh, Chris and Tommy get um, at the end. I, I, I love that part. I love the yeah. destruction of the town. I guess I should probably should put a spoiler warning yeah, at, the, I, at the head of this podcast. Yeah. Um, but the one, one of the most striking things, I feel, like I said, is the, the, the destruction of a town by a, a, a young woman who only ever wanted to fit in yeah. destroying the place that she called home feels like a perfect ending yeah. to me and that's why the the original ver- first off, I don't I don't care too much for the Sissy Spacek version simply because I think the only good part of that movie is Sissy Spacek's performance yeah. but I don't think she was a good carry I know that sounds contradictory but I, mean, I don't I, think I get it she did a poor performance but not a good performance as Carrie. You could put any name on her and it would be a good performance. It, exactly. Um, I never believed that Carrie was someone who would have been bullied. Now, that that's just my own opinion. I know everybody gets bullied no matter what shape, what, no matter what, what your... What, your uh, your your deal is yeah perfect. Uh, no matter what your deal is, everybody gets bullied. I remember when I went to school, even the popular kids. We used to make fun of the popular kids off to the side when they weren't picking on us. Um, so that I with that one and uh, and again with the Chloe Grace Moretz, I don't believe that she was ever you know that she was. Yeah. I don't believe that she ever I, would have been yeah. bullied. I understand that it's a movie, but she is just too much of a picture perfect person to believe that. That's why I don't like her. I mean, her performance was fine. She did good. Yeah. She she did good. I just uh, <laughs> one thing. I don't know why. I just I find the scene where she's lifting up her bed and putting it down in that one <laughs> makes me laugh. I don't know. I just it feels very sick. I got, no. I know why. Actually, it's her hand reaching out and the way the face she's making. Yeah. Something about Chloe Grace Moretz's face. I this is gonna sound horrible. I'm sorry, but whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. When she is overacting using her face she just feels so silly to me she looks like a comic book character like the old comic book characters where their faces are just all wonky it's like what's going on there i can't yeah <laughs> when she, in the bedroom scene when she's lifting up her bed she just looks so dumb and i can't that, that's what <laughs> I, I see that's 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 where uh personal preference comes in because I, I i loved all of that i thought i thought she did a fantastic job but um, when, once again, you know, it's just one of those things is just preference. Um, with uh, and I, I have been people have called me a troll, thinking that uh, I, I hate on certain Stephen King content just to get views, which is beyond silly. Um, because I, if anything, I would want to bring in you know the the Stephen King fans, not piss them off, that kind of thing. But uh, there is a bit of solidarity when you do come across someone who dislikes the same kind of thing that you do, and I think. That's where the beginning of the book fits in, where Sue is friends with these girls that are just absolutely terrible, horrible yeah. people, especially yeah. Chris Harginson. And Chris is the best friend. I can't ever remember her name. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember all the, the little lackeys that she had or any of them, but and I know they're portrayed very well in all of the movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, the, the, the shitty side characters are are good in all of them. But... uh. That that's one of the things that strikes me so 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 much about the book is the the ability for someone to to change. There there's there's a story arc here, but the major story arc I feel is in Sue. Yeah. The Sue Snell's character um. is the major story arc. And while Carrie might be the main character, the most compelling character in the book for me is Sue because she is the one who is trying to enact change throughout the entire thing. Whereas Miss Desjardins, even though she is sticking up for Carrie, because I mean, she, she even slaps Carrie and is yeah. like, stop overreacting, all this stuff. Um, but I, I can't understand that because it, it, you got to get someone out of a yeah. freak out sometimes. It's just the best way to do it is a physical reaction because it's a difference. Yeah, I, I I can see that. I, I think it's still kind of an overreaction. It is, it but is. Um, But back then, I mean, there was capital punishment in... Yeah. In, or corporal punishment. I can't remember what it's called. I think capital punishment is 
death. I think that's, yeah. yeah, I think that's the death. So it's corporal punishment is a, a physical, uh, like a beating of some kind. Um, but that back then was was the norm yeah. because they used to spank kids all the time. Um, but I think on a final note, what I what I want to leave off on is uh, I find this book fascinating because every single time I read it, it gets better. Um, and that's not always the case with Stephen King books. Yeah. Um, that there are quite a few that get better upon a second reading. Lisey's story was better a second time. Bag of Bones was better a second time. So on and so forth. And then you have some other, some utter garbage in the Stephen King lexicon. Out of the books that you have read, this is where I want to end this. Out of the books that you have read, which one so far is your least favorite? Oh my, I've only read like four. Yeah, um, but... Pet Cemetery and The Shining haven't finished. Um, you haven't finished Doctor, Doctor Sleep? Sleep, right? No. Um, so out of those three, out of those three, um, or is the reason why you haven't finished Doctor Sleep is because it's not as good as his other stuff? Actually, I think that might because the other stuff right. I just burn through. I like it. I like seeing Danny as an adult, right. but it's just not as compelling as I thought it would. Be. I thought it would be much more interesting to see him as an adult and having um the same issues as his father yeah right and both the parallels with that and having the shining and having um abra and the other stuff that's happening my favorite part so far are the with the true knot right honestly when we're not um with them i'm kind of bored i'm like i they are very well written scenes like the scene where the old woman dies and he talks to um uh I'm definitely going to have to put spoiler um, warnings for, for, for <laughs> several things. That's all right. Go um, ahead. I forgot his name. The black so, guy. So, spoiler, spoiler warnings for... for the but, end. But, spoiler warning for, 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 for Dr. Sleep. We're about to talk a little bit about Dr. Sleep before we end the episode. Um, the scene where... My favorite scene so far that isn't with the true knot is when he's with the old woman and she takes forever to, like, die and he right. talks to the guy from the hotel i forgot his name uh not horace derwent uh you're talking about the bartender grady no no the the, the chef. Me, oh uh hang on halloran dick halloran yes. when sorry he's talking to him, that's my favorite scene so far but other than that when it's on abra or danny oh no the the library mind scene was really good too yeah. but other than that if it's not the true not true not i'm kind of Board. Like it's good. Yeah. It's, it's well. I, one of the one of the major complaints, and we're gonna save this for an actual, maybe shining Doctor Sleep episode. Once you once you finish that, uh, one of, one of the most striking things about Doctor Sleep, and it is a complaint from a lot of the fans that the movie took care of, was the feeling that Abra was overpowered and that the True Knot were not good villains. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. Um, okay. Before you say anything else, I'm actually gonna end the episode here because we don't want to go into too much yeah, for. Yes the other books thank you for joining us uh i don't know what i'm gonna call this uh this stephen king podcast p cast king cast i don't know yeah p p cast no the, the e cast uh but no i want to put i want to put dan in here too uh i don't even know where i'm gonna k, upload this uh, lowercase k uppercase e and g king cast <laughs> Anyways, so thanks for joining us. Um, until next time, I have been E, you have been you. Uh, Dan, say goodbye. No. No, exactly. <laughs> but until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.